Howdy folks, and welcome back to my channel. I'm kidding, I'm not a cowboy. I'm not from Texas. Every time I put on this shirt, I'm like, I look like a cowboy. No you don't, Patrick. You look like a gay guy who's wearing a tie-dye plaid shirt with cut-off sleeves. But you don't want to talk about cowboys, you're here to talk about bathhouses. So welcome back to my channel, guys. Not everyone has experienced the art of bathhousing, which now is a verb. So for those of you who are curious about what a bathhouse is, when the best time of day to go would be for you, and what to bring for a trip to the tubs, you watch this video, which is jam-packed with hot tips. And stay till the end because I'm going to share with y'all a secret to navigating your next bathhouse experience that will have you saying, oh shit, why didn't I think of that? And the answer is probably because you didn't spend the better half of your 20s trolling the dark corridors of bathhouses. Who better to learn from than someone who used to work in not one, but two different bathhouses. But that's a story for another video. Okay, so let's just jump right in. I'm guessing if you're watching this, you have some idea what these places are like, even if it's just from pictures that you've seen online or whatever. I'm going to go through a walking tour of a typical bathhouse, pointing out the different areas and what you need to know about them. Now before you leave your house, you need to make sure to bring a few essentials. Hot tip! I suggest a pair of flip-flops because the floors are gross and you don't want to be stepping in some puddle in a dark room. <laughs> you need lube and anything that you need for sex that you need, like condoms, a cock ring, poppers, wet wipes. Do not rely on someone else having that stuff for you, including the bathhouse. The worst thing is to be there and find you don't have something that you need to have a good time. Hot tip, cash is king, so bring cash for vending machines and the like. You're gonna need ID for the entrance. You're gonna need your phone, obviously. Hot tip, bring your own douche. They do sell stuff, but the last thing you want to do is be digging through your coin purse, standing at a vending machine in the near pitch blackness, trying to find the right money to buy an overpriced piece of plastic that needs assembly, hurts your butt, and is unfamiliar to you. And hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, why not give me a quick thumbs up by liking. When you walk in, you'll be faced with a cashier type person. If you're lucky, you'll get a smile and a Hey, how can I help you? But these guys work really weird hours and they deal with a lot of people in different like states of sobriety. You might be catching them at the end of a hard shift. So just be patient. Don't expect too much. What kind of mood would you be in after an eight hour shift? It's five in the morning after scooping poop out of the jacuzzi and calling an ambulance for room 102 where some guy went down on G. Those are true stories. Basically your choices are to get a locker or get a room. It'll be a flat rate for either one and usually you get it for about like six to eight hours. Okay, so the question is locker or room. Of course a locker is cheaper, however my recommendation would be to get a room unless you really can't afford it or you really just want to like pump and dump, stroke and go or whatever, like you're on your lunch hour, you only have 30 minutes, so just get a locker, who cares, it doesn't matter. Barring those two situations though, hot tip, a room will always be a better option. First of all, a room has a door <laughs> and sometimes you need to get away from the others. Maybe you need to rest for a little bit, maybe you piss someone off and you're hiding or maybe you know someone won't leave you alone and you're in hiding. Okay so like probably the number one reason you're gonna get a room is so that you can hide. You probably brought some things with you uh, and you can easily safely and securely store those things in your room. Maybe you're not an exhibitionist and you don't want a circle of men standing around you on your knees in a dark room. Maybe you like to find that one guy and get him alone. Well, good luck if you don't have a room. I've made the mistake of assuming or hoping that the other person will have a room, but that's leaving it up to chance and doesn't always work out. And if you are an exhibitionist, you can just always leave your door open. Like, you have options. Okay, so the cashier will slide you a towel, a key, a condom, maybe like a remote control if you have a TV, which comes in real handy when you've done like a few laps around the bathhouse and you realize you got there way too early and you don't see anything interesting, so you go back to the room and you watch porn to kill time. Hot tip! When you get to the room, I'd suggest turning on all the lights 
and doing a quick spot check of the room. Look for like used condoms, cock rings, even syringes. Like lift the mattress, check the pillow. I've never personally had a problem with a dirty room, but it is a bathhouse and things do get missed. Other than that, the room is yours to set up however you feel comfortable. I would say though that you should store everything in your little like locker storage area and lock it. There are some shady characters trolling around there with sticky fingers. So lock away everything that you like do not need on your person and that includes your phone. You don't need to be on Instagram. The purpose of your visit is sex. But when you do open your locker and you start digging through your valuables, which is another point, do not bring <laughs> anything of real value to a bathhouse. Your phone should be like the most valuable thing you have. Do not bring your diamond tennis bracelet or your 14 karat diamond earrings. There's no point of having that in a bathhouse. For sure you're gonna lose it or for sure it will get stolen. When you open your locker, make sure the room to your door is closed because you never know who's lurking in the hall, taking mental notes of what's in your room, waiting for you to leave so that they can jimmy the lock. I know this sounds paranoid, but these things happen and it's my job to keep you safe. Now you've undressed and you're ready to explore. Let's head over to the wet area for a shower and a poke around. Good wet areas will have showers, jacuzzis, a steam room, and uh, like a, a maybe a dry sauna. Hot tip, taking a quick shower to start the night is a good way to get other people to see that you've arrived. And also you're killing like two birds with one stone because you get fresh and clean and they get to see the goods. The showers are a good place to cruise without investing too much. Likewise, the jacuzzi is a good place for non-threatening cruising. Sitting there, you can watch people, they drop their towels, they're coming and going, you're pretending to just have a nice hot tub and minding your own business when really you're waiting for the right one to come along. Dry sauna is another good place to pretend you're enjoying the facility when really you're getting a closer look at potential prey. I mean guys, steam rooms however are usually very dark and really misty so unless you don't really care who's in there, playing in there is fun but you do sweat a lot and you have to remember to hydrate. Also, you won't be alone and it might get busy. That's why you got a room. Okay, so now you're nice and clean, let's head over to the public play area. These areas have minimal lighting. They are sometimes maze-like with little rooms with benches or glory holes. There'll be videos playing on screens to keep everyone like in the mood and there's a lot of looky-loo. You're gonna hit a lot of dead ends, you're gonna bump into a lot of people, you'll stop sometimes, you'll try to suss out situations. If there's a couple of guys playing and you're like debating whether or not you wanna join. These places are very transient and mostly meant for people who don't mind an audience obviously. Hot tip, it's also a good place to find someone you like and tell them, hey, I got a room. For some guy who doesn't know better and they just showed up and got a locker and now they're regretting that decision, finding someone like you who does have a room is like winning the lottery. And since you watched this video and you knew to get a room, you're like Ed McMahon knocking on someone's door with a big ass check. Do you even know who Ed McMahon is? Are you too young? <laughs> gay and over 40. Then there are public areas that are totally dark. These places are really for the adventurous among you. So throw caution to the wind type people, this is where you wanna go. Most people hover around the outside of these types of places waiting for someone that they're interested in to venture into the room and then they follow them in. So now let's head down the hall to the video room. Most places have like a video room with a, a huge screen and maybe smaller screens around it and lots of seating. This kind of place invites people to stop, take a seat and watch. Usually they're half watching the screens and like half watching those people that are coming and going. Hot tip, this is a good place to people watch because the screens really light up the room so you can really get a good look at faces. And most people swing by to check it out. So instead of going around in circles and getting tired doing that way, endless laps around the place, you can just sit in one place and everyone just kind of comes to you. Finally, some bathhouses have gyms, and believe it or not, people actually use the gyms. And much like the showers and the video room, the gym is a good place to be doing something or pretending to be doing something, but also be checking out guys in like a better lit environment. So now that you understand the lay of the land, let's talk about when to go to a bathhouse. It's really gonna depend on what you're looking for because some bathhouses have special college nights 
or leather nights or blackout nights. So pick a night that really interests you. Also, unless you live in a big city like New York or LA, I would wait until the weekend to venture out to the top because weekdays are generally slower so the pickings are slim thursday through sunday night should be good hot tip the crowd will change depending on the time of night the peak time is usually between 11 p.m and 2 a.m there's an older crowd earlier in the evening then from like 11 to 2 like i said you'll get an influx of these drunk guys coming out of the bars then after 3 a.m you're kind of left with tweakers and drug addicts which is cool been there done that of course a lot of bathhouses are 24 hours so if you can only go during the day then go during the day you'll figure it out it's really a hit or miss thing you never know what you're gonna get you could go at the peak time and find nothing or you could wander in on a tuesday afternoon and meet the fantasy man of your dreams it's really a crapshoot why don't you let me know down in the comments if you've ever been to a bathhouse which one was it what your experience was like do you have any tips to share with the rest of us now it's time for my top secret hot tip for bathhousing when you check in they hand you a key and the key is usually on some kind of stretchy elastic band thingy with a little number tag that has the number of your locker or room on it but in this case room because i told you to get a room so you got a room right you're in the bathhouse and you're out and about it's nice to have your hands free obviously to play you slide the elastic part up your arm around your bicep or you can keep it around your wrist that's not the tip the secret hot tip is before you start trolling the halls looking for dick. Remove the little number tag from your keychain and lock it in the locker in your room. Unless you have short-term memory loss, you can probably remember that your room number is 202. But if somehow you misplace your keys, you drop them somewhere in the dark, or someone swipes them off a bench while you're bent over in the five-man orgy, whoever finds your keys now knows your room number and they have access to the room and your locker. Remove the number tag when you arrive and put it back before you leave. A brilliant yet easy move to do. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and remember to comment and like this video. I will see you next time. Mwah.